With these three types of decay, we can balance these as reactions taking place in unstable isotopes, just the same way we did when we were looking at the formation of new compounds when we were looking at chemical reactions. So to balance a decay reaction, what we do is the following. We start with an unstable isotope. Now we're going to start with radium. Radium, you should probably know the name of. Um, Mary Curie, if you're thinking about your chemistry history, was the discoverer of radium. Also notable, she won a Nobel Prize for it. She also died of radiation poisoning. This stuff is very unstable. Now, radium, symbol Ra, has an atomic mass of 88 and an atomic number of 226. So radium will undergo what we call alpha decay. And when it undergoes alpha decay, what happens is that we produce a new product. And we show the arrow to show reactants and products being separated, just like we did in chemical reactions. And it produces radon, which you can see on your periodic table. It's element 86. And it has an atomic mass of 222. Now the problem here is that matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be moved around. And that still counts even when we're talking about protons and neutrons within a single elemental atom, in this case, this unstable radium isotope. So if we've decreased our atomic number by two, that's still not gone. It hasn't been destroyed in a puff of smoke. It's producing a product that is our unstable decay particle, in this case, an alpha particle, 88 and 86, the remainder is the two protons that are part of our alpha particle. And 226 less 222 is the four mass, which is the total mass of our alpha decay particle. So this is the base idea of alpha decay. Now, beta decay is a little bit different. For beta decay, we're going to start with an unstable isotope of iodine. So our next one is going to be beta. This unstable isotope of I has a mass of 131 and an atomic number of 53. This should not come as a surprise. The atomic number is the same as it would be for the regular elemental atom. Now, if this undergoes beta decay, we don't lose mass. And this is where things get really strange, is that our mass remains the same. It's still 131. But for beta decay to take place, we actually increase the number of protons. And the reason we've increased the number of protons is that one of our neutrons has actually undergone a spontaneous breakdown, separating into a proton and an electron. And so as a result, our final product here is going to be xenon, which is element number 54 on your periodic table. And along with that, we also produce a beta particle, a mass of zero, a number of protons of negative one, and we show that Greek symbol beta. So beta decay is very different because it's producing this high energy electron, basically. And that electron doesn't count in these totals but it's produced when one of the neutrons from the unstable iodine broke down, producing a new proton and releasing that electron as a high energy particle flying out of the nucleus. This is much more high energy than this, but it's a much smaller mass. And those corresponding effects will have different results in terms of the damage this type of radiation can cause. Now, our last decay form is gamma decay. Now, gamma decay is not actually a particle. Gamma rays, if you've heard of those from the electromagnetic spectrum, is this type of radiation. And radioisotopes, or radioactive isotopes that produce gamma decay don't actually change their nuclear structure, but they spontaneously give off a gamma ray as they decay, as they lose their energy. Something inside their atom reconfigures and a gamma ray is the result. It's just a burst of energy. And what it looks like is this. 
So our last one is going to be an unstable nickel isotope. Mass of 60, atomic number of 28, the symbol Ni. Now to show that this nickel can undergo gamma decay, we're going to put a star next to the symbol. And that's only going to be present when you're dealing with gamma decay. And the star delineates that this isotope will undergo this type of decay. So our product here, because there's no mass to a gamma ray, is still nickel. It's still a mass of 60, an atomic number of 28, and the symbol Ni. But the star is gone. And instead, what we add is that gamma ray symbol, 0, 0, gamma. Now these three types of decay have different characteristics. Each type of decay, large amount of mass, small amount of mass, no mass. But very low energy, moderate energy, and extremely high energy. And as a result, alpha particles can be blocked very easily. You can protect yourself from alpha radiation with a sheet of paper. Beta particles, those are a little bit tougher. But gamma rays, this requires inches worth of lead to block out the majority of that type of radiation. This is very penetrative, but doesn't have a lot of mass to cause damage. And we'll talk a bit more about that when we look at diseases that can result from exposure to radiation.